Thank you for tuning in to Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service. Uh, today I'm, I've had a lot of requests about this Type 4 Class D output card, or I should say the Class 4 type amplifiers in general. So today I was going to go over some general layouts of this style of board. Uh, so the, I'm just going to do a couple quick image captures for you uh, to help bring all this into into one big picture. So in the upper left hand corner you'll see the oscilloscope shot. So you'll see I have channel 1 of the scope, the gates of the positive rail 640 ends and then I have channel 2 hooked up to the gates of the negative rail 640 ends then I have channel 3 hooked up to the speaker positive terminal. You'll see those three images on the scope there. So if you want to capture a picture of that, and we will move on to the next picture. And in this image on the oscilloscope, you'll see that I have the time base uh, set to where you can see the signal. I do have a 50 hertz signal going into the preamp, so you'll see that 50 hertz on channel 3 you'll see the low side drive and you will see the rail to rail drive on the oscilloscope there. That first image had channel 2 set to AC coupling so I could bring it up to the center because um, as you see I have the scope set to 50 volt divisions which brings that negative drive down below the, uh, the view. So in this image here the channel 2 is set back to DC coupling. So you can see the images um, as a whole uh, all set to 50 volt on the divisions at 20 microseconds. And then we'll uh, we'll move on to the functions of the Type 4 drive card. Alright, so now we're going to move on to the output card. Um, let me see if I got everything in view here. So you can see um, I have this picture. As you can see I have this camera up. I do have some labeling on this board uh, just to help identify some areas of the board here. And then probably what I'll do is end up switching to my um, top-down camera. Um, so we do have our three 5 volt regulators which are going to be key to to understanding the drive of this card. So let me switch to the top-down view here. Make sure everything is in view for you. Okay, so uh, in the previous video, which you'll see up here in the corner, the card here if you want to go watch uh, the pin out of this card I already did a video on that uh, so we have drive on pins uh, 6 7 10 11 um, if you're to probe the drive card with your oscilloscope uh, reference to uh, the negative terminal so what I'll do is I'll start off with 6 and 7 pin 6, pin 7, you will find pin 6 and 7 comes back around to your 6N137. Uh, your 6N137 is going to be your high speed optocoupler, which is going to be um, between pin 2, 3, 6, and 7 on this board. You're going to have two optocouplers. So, if you want to pull up a data sheet for that op optocoupler, you can. Uh, feel free to do that. So pins 6 and 7 uh, come around to pin 2 of the optocoupler that drives your uh, 640 ends that are on the positive rail. So what we're going to do is we're just going to adjust some settings here so you can see 
the optocoupler, the input of the optocoupler, which is your anode of that LED, which in turn is switching the uh, NMOS transistor on the output of your optocoupler, which you can see on the scope in the upper left hand corner. Switching the transistor of that uh, NMOS transistor for your positive rail 640 ns So then again, it's the same thing over for your negative rail 640 ns So you will see that on 9 and or 10 and 11, excuse me, you will have a drive on 10 and 11. Uh, it comes around and goes to the same thing on the other side pin 2 of your optocoupler so pin 2 of the optocoupler is again uh, switching your anode of the internal LED of the optocoupler which in turn is triggering your NMOS transistor on the output of the optocoupler which this one is reference down to the negative rail so all in all this card switches to optocouplers the optocouplers isolate the high voltage from the low voltage drive switches one in reference to negative rail switches the other in reference to the output So these two 5 volt regulators are supplied with an auxiliary winding off of the far right transformer. If you were to uh, measure the, uh, the windings of those, they're roughly 12 volts. If you were to take a, a digital multimeter and measure between here and here, you're going to get 12 volts and here and here you're gonna get 12 volts so just what I'm gonna do is just fire up my meter here sorry my multimeter doesn't have capabilities of uh, hooking up to a computer so one day hopefully I will have that together uh, so yeah so I have about 11.32 volts uh, with 12 volt input 11. 32 volts on the auxiliary power for the negative rail 5 volt regulator and I'm roughly 11.33 volts supplying the 5 volt regulator for the positive speaker terminal. I just thought I'd add that in that there are two auxiliary windings that supply the 12 volts to those 5 volt regulators that reference the optocouplers. So then I've also had requests about the protection circuits, the location of the protection circuits and what type of protection circuits we have on this board. So what I can do on this particular board here is I can show you that the power supply over current protection you'll see that I have outlined right here and this square is going to be your uh, Q6 and Q11 which is watching the negative rail of the power supply and then if you follow these vias back you'll find that they go back over um, to the Q51, Q54 area of your power supply, which in turn shuts the power supply down on overcurrent. There's another section of your protection circuit, which is over by these speaker terminals uh, over at the power supply drive circuit area, which I'm not sure. If, let me try to get this in shot here for you. Let me see if I can find it here. Alright, so you'll see I have it outlined off the shunt 
of the output speaker output so I'll just get the scope here for you to show you the show you the sine wave that I've got here in the output which you can see the the 50 Hertz sine wave actually it's shown on the scope yeah 50 Hertz sine wave on the output uh, so the shunt here is going to be your other section of your protection circuit area outlined in this box so I'm not going to go into great depth into the layout of this particular protection circuits because the boards may vary as long as you have an idea of what the shunt purpose is there's two of them here on this board you'll you have a good idea of the circuit and how it reacts with monitoring voltage so that really is the rundown of the output section of the optocouplers and the uh, just a brief rundown of some protection circuits of this amplifier board again you have the power supply protection circuit over by the output drive card and then your output protection circuit is over by the power supply drive area so um, some people get this backwards and think that this protection circuit is for the output which is incorrect it's for the power supply which you can also trace back through the vias going back to your shunts and so overall that's pretty much the layout of this board these are real common boards the 640 ends on the output the 274HCO2 ICs on the board uh, this is just a common layout again I had that video prior to this um, and one more word of precaution is uh, do not fire up this kind of board without the drive card if you try to fire this board up with the drive card out you will destroy in a very drastic way uh, typically it's three to four of these 640 ends as a matter of fact I can show you one piece of a transistor right there um, I was gonna try to catch a video of this but maybe at a future date I will because this board's running out of 640 ends so um, I hope that kind of gives you a general idea of the signals that you're looking for that you should have on the output of this card and I do thank you for watching please like and subscribe and I will be out again with another video soon